This is why silver will become the post-collapse currency. With everyone focused on gold as an investment vehicle, many have ignored a metal that is 20 times rarer. Most investors assume that because silver is almost 50 times cheaper than gold, it's more abundant. They are dead wrong. The world has been drawing down its above-ground supply of silver for decades, diminishing the only source of what is available for investment. Only now have we begun to collectively recognize silver as a solid investment. While gold is rarer below the surface, silver is more rare and undervalued above ground. Silver has been operating at a supply deficit for many years, and I think it's only a matter of time before spot price reconciles with the true value of this beautiful bullion. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Silver is 17.5 times more abundant in the Earth's crust than gold. But the amount of above-ground gold available far exceeds that of silver. To date, over 1.5 million tons of silver have been mined. The industry has consumed 90% of mined silver, leaving a huge opportunity for a commodity shortage in the years to come. Mining for silver specifically has dramatically declined. In 2017, the majority of silver was mined as a byproduct of other metals, like copper and lead. For every 12.5 tons of earth, there is 1 gram of silver. This ratio, combined with the extraordinary low spot price of silver, makes mining the precious metal less profitable and less appealing than many other metals. This mining shortage has the potential to create an enormous industry shortage of silver. In 1950, there were 10 billion ounces of available silver above ground. By 1980, that number shrank to 3.5 billion. And today, no significant government stockpiles of silver exist anywhere in the world. The exact opposite is true of gold. The world currently produces about 700 million ounces of silver per year. Where does it all go? Believe it or not, most of it winds up as garbage. We literally throw billions of dollars worth of silver in trash bins every year. Silver is required in the production of thousands of products, CDs, cell phone batteries, calculators, printed circuit boards, hearing aids, electronic switches, TV screens, catalytic converters, inks, computer monitors, RFID chips, etc. Once any of these items have served its purpose, it generally gets tossed. And it's simply more expensive to recycle the silver from these products than it is to dig more out of the ground. I expect that the world's dumps will be a precious source of resources like silver in the future. The difference between the metals is that gold is produced, but it's not consumed. While gold is a highly desired item, it's not an industrial commodity. In other words, gold is desired, but silver is needed. All of the gold that has ever been mined is basically still around. Studies suggest 98% of all gold mined throughout history is still available in the form of coins, bars, artifacts, and jewelry. But silver is different. From 1990 to 2000 alone, over 2 billion ounces of silver disappeared from the market to consumers. Despite the lack of global stockpiles, new technology will continue to discover more industrial applications for silver, putting a further strain on world supplies. Consider the new photovoltaic industry as an example. In China, the production of photovoltaic solar panels has doubled every single year since 2003. The demand for silver from the global photovoltaic industry has soared in the past few years, and global demand is expected to reach 150 million ounces in the coming year, just to satisfy the photovoltaic industry. But to widen the supply deficit, even more, the Silver Institute forecasts industrial uses of silver will rise sharply over the next five years. The organization estimates that by 2015, the demand for silver from industry will increase 36%. At the highest level, silver is used in industry, in jewelry, and as an investment, and or wealth preservation. Together, these three categories represent more than 95% of annual silver demand. So then, why is the spot price of silver so low? Why is there a 68 to 1 gold to silver ratio when it seems gold is more easily mined and doesn't face the same consumption habits as silver? I share the theories of many others who believe in silver spot price is controlled by a combination of a few factors, I believe price manipulation is alive and well. Several large banks are currently under fire for their roles in verified price rigging. 
I believe more banks will be prosecuted in the near future, as well. In addition to banks, the industry has a huge interest in keeping silver prices low. By undervaluing the metal, their supply costs remain low and profit high. Silver has been used as a medium of exchange dating back to the earliest of records. It has always been considered to be a form of money. Even up until the late 19th century, most nations were on a silver standard as to their money, with silver coins making up the main circulating currency. Even though today's silver coins are not used as national currency and have been replaced by other than silver coins and fiat, paper, silver is still collected, stacked, and invested by many people. Why? As a hedge against today's rickety financial systems, modern currency and evaluation thereof. People who know the history of currencies know that every paper currency ever created has always collapsed. And most critical thinking people today know that our current system and foundation are no longer on solid ground. Here's a challenge. After you have purchased your first one ounce silver coin such as the Royal Canadian Mint, Silver Maple Leaf, hold that coin in one hand and a $20 bill in the other. While they both are of a similar worth based on today's approximate silver price, almost $27 at this moment in time, which one feels more like, real money to you? The silver coin sure feels more like real money to me. So for the financially preparedness minded, it makes logical sense to preserve some of one's wealth in a form that has been accepted for thousands of years that is silver. While a reflexive, knee-jerk, reaction from some people might be to say something like, you can't eat silver, so what good is it during a time of socio-economic collapse? The fact is that there are innumerable hypothetical collapse scenarios, many or most of which are not all out Armageddon. Silver is simply one way to preserve one's wealth, regardless of how much or how little. So what would become of silver in a post-collapse scenario? Let's say that the dollar is being inflated away, it actually is as we speak, and enters a period of hyperinflation, which it likely will one day. When that happens, its purchasing power will diminish greatly. While the system holds together during pre-collapse, precious metals such as silver will become highly priced within the inflated currency, thus holding its value and very likely increasing its investment value as others pour into the commodity to save their own wealth. In this scenario, silver will have been an extraordinary investment. Let's say that today's current paper currency has one day become essentially worthless, post-collapse, and regional bartering has become the new normal during the collapse. While goods and services are a means of exchange, there's little doubt that silver too will be a medium of exchange as payment and trade. Take an example, the pre-1965 coins. A one-ounce silver coin may become a very high value, requiring the use of smaller denominations of silver for commerce and trade. This will likely include the use of the pre-1965 coins, example the quarter, dimes, that are 90% silver. Most coins minted in the United States before 1965 were 90% silver and 10% copper. These coins contain 0.7234 ounces of silver per dollar face value. Another example is the 90% silver Roosevelt dimes. You might consider acquiring some amount of physical silver be it bullion or junk silver. Not only for financial insurance but for diversification and peace of mind. You might consider diversifying and convert some of your fiat paper currency into physical silver as insurance against the current system. There are crucial factors why silver will increase more in value than gold during the next financial meltdown. These factors are not well known by many precious metals analysts because they focus on antiquated information and knowledge. While several individuals in the precious metals community forecast a much higher gold-silver ratio during the next financial crash, I see quite the opposite taking place. The white metal should be uncoupled from gold and should be seen as a strategic metal due to its necessity in many everyday appliances, from computers to electronics to solar panels. The silver production has gone down in recent years, meaning that contrary to popular belief, the metal is actually a rare commodity. We are consuming, as a human race, over 1 billion ounce of silver annually, and miners are only producing about 800 million ounces a year, and that's been dropping for three consecutive years. As US currency continues to be less strong than in previous years, both gold and silver have begun some steady inclines, with the white metal gaining, and maintaining, a trading price that is over 17 United States dollars per ounce. At some stage, silver will wake up and play catch up. That's a move worth owning.
We could easily see 20 United States dollars per ounce silver, which is a roughly 18% move. And that can happen quickly. Finally, although supply and demand play a smaller role in what moves the white metal, they are still factors that have an effect on the resource. Interestingly, the latest World Silver Survey, published by the Silver Institute and Thomson Reuters GFMS team, indicates that in 2018, the silver market experienced a 3% decrease in supply to 1,004.3 million ounces due to reduced mined and scrap output. That led to a physical market deficit of 29.2 million ounces. Of the 1,033.5 million ounces of silver that were consumed last year, a large portion was through the purchase of silver bullion coins, silver bars, and jewelry. The demand for bullion coins and bars climbed an impressive 20%, with the rise being driven by silver bar demand, which rocketed 53%. India was the main silver bar consumer, with demand soaring 115% higher than in 2017. Meanwhile, silver jewelry demand rose 4% from 2017 to 212.5 million ounces. Once again, India was the largest consumer with a 16% increase in jewelry demand, setting a new record level. The industry will continue to use and need silver in ever-increasing amounts, and with this current economic situation and the printing of money out of thin air, silver only has one way to go, and that is up. Silver is considerably undervalued, and this places the commodity in a position to be prone to explosive gains once its true value becomes more apparent. Silver is truly a hold and weight investment. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.